Top 5 Best Avenue Receivers Under $1,000 Number 5. Morantz NR1711 If you have limited space in your house but still want to give your speakers a totally new sounding, you can purchase Morantz NR1711. It is a tiny 7.2 channel receiver with power output of 50 watts 8 ohms and 70 watts 6 ohms I was stunned when I saw this small unit but put it to the same hard test as the above mentioned models. The biggest astonishment was to learn that this model is capable of 8K HDMI upscaling. Even some more robust devices lack this feature. Moreover, the NR1711 supports numerous video quality boosting technologies. Colors are true to life, and this is important while selecting a home theater receiver. Thanks to integrated Dolby Atmos and DTSX, you'll get genuine surround sound regardless of the video you are watching. If you fancy war dramas and action films, you will fall in love with this model. Moreover, the NR1711 mimics the sound produced by in-ceiling speakers, so you don't need to add them to a setup. As for music playback, I heard a detailed sound while streaming from online platforms and with CD players attached. If you don't like such peaceful sound reproduction, go to the Odyssey menu and turn off the equalization of the frequency response. Then turn on the graphic equalizer and slightly tweak the sound of the entire system or each channel separately. But don't get too carried away. Pros The latest video switching technology and HOS capability in one pack. Pre-out connections for an external amplifier. Remarkable calibration. Slim design to fit in tight spots. Cons disappointing app. Low-end plastic enclosure. On-screen menus are poorly designed. Coming in number 4. Sony STR-DN1080 This receiver appeared in the market a couple of years ago, but it is still a trendy model. The developer managed to combine a wide range of modern functions and ease of use, making this unit so popular. This receiver was created based on the highly successful 1070 model and upgraded with a Dolby Atmos decoder. It also sounds a little different being focused on home theater use. The power output here is 100 watts with 6 ohm speakers. The model has 6 HDMI inputs, while most competing devices come with 4 HDMI ports. In addition, there are 2 HDMI outputs, so it can output content to 2 different zones. Other connectivity options are standard, optical and coaxial inputs, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. I especially like a great set of streaming features, including Chromecast, UPnP, and Spotify Connect. Chromecast support means you can play music through the AV receiver from any Android smartphone or the Chrome browser and a dozen compatible apps. You can also control the receiver with your Google Home smart speaker. The receiver also has a proprietary multi-room system now called Music Center. It has been improved over the previous version to make transferring music between compatible Sony components easier and more stable. Sony STR-DN1080 did a great job while I was watching the movie. The sound was lilting, and the voices of soldiers and other people were natural. The sound of shooting and explosion filled every inch of my studio. When I listened to music, I noticed that basses were slightly muffled but only at high volumes. As for the rest of the soundstage, it was sonorous and warm. Pros TAC EX Auto Calibration Phantom Surround Back creates the illusion of more physical speakers. A 4K repeater allows data to pass through the receiver without compromising the image quality. Second Wi-Fi antenna for dual-band Wi-Fi for AirPlay, DLNA, and Chromecast. Cons poorly designed UI, which makes setup process very long. Remote lacks buttons for key features. Inefficient cooling system. Coming in number 3. Denon AVRS 960H. Denon AVRS 960H is the replacement for the S950H model released last year. The main difference between the new product and its predecessor is the support for video in 8K at 60Hz as for 4K, the manufacturer claims a 120Hz frame rate is already available in this unit. Among the truly theatrical advantages of the AVRS 960H, I should highlight support for HDR10 Plus and Dynamic HDR. Quick media switching allows joggling HDMI-connected video sources without screen flickering. Awesome features that give it a competitive edge over Sony STR-DN1080 or HLG technology and Dolby Vision. 
This seven-channel receiver features HEOS proprietary remote audio access technology. With its help, I effortlessly initiated music playback from Amazon Music, Tidal, Spotify, TuneIn, and SoundCloud. I also tested Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and AirPlay 2 features, they work flawlessly. The declared power output is 90 watt 8 ohms and 125 watt 6 ohms. The AVRS 960H is Rune tested, so I used an upgraded Rune music interface to learn info about an artist and a current composition. I relied on this feature while listening to MP3 audio and high resolution audio formats, WAV, FLA, and ALAC. Music was always soft and pure, no matter what audio I played. As for sounds in the movie, I like a distinct separation between dialogues and background noise. If you are a first-time user or want to get good sound without manual adjustments, make use of the Odyssey audio calibration. The technology is well-designed, so it can accurately analyze your space to prevent deafening and raucous sounds. As for wireless control, you can use all popular voice assistants. Without spinning controls on the case, you can wirelessly adjust volume, go to the next track, select the sound source, and more. Pro's Full System Calibration Pass-through capabilities for HDMI are excellent. Switching inputs is very fast. Cons gets rather hot even during regular TV watching. No HDMI ports on the front panel. Not THX certified. Coming in number 2. Yamaha RX V6A. Those chasing top sound quality and true-to-life visuals should have a closer look at this receiver. It is designed for integration into a 7-channel setup, largely expanding the capabilities of advanced home theaters. Thanks to the support of the latest audio and video formats, you can enjoy the premieres in remarkable quality without leaving your house. The developer created a masterpiece with 8K and the newest HDMI standards support, making it a serious rival to such models as Marantz SR5014 and Denon AVR2700H. Thanks to embedded Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos technologies, you can nicely level up your media consumption experience. When watching the movie, I was curious about how well HDR10 Plus is manifested here. Astonishingly, the device processes videos on a scene-by-scene -scene basis and also reveals scene characteristics for more accurate details. That is a feature few receivers in this price category can boast of. Yamaha also cared for gamers, offering them such perks as quick media switching, variable refresh rate, and auto low latency mode. I wasn't actually interested in these features, but it is nice to know they are available on this device. While listening to music, I tested both wired and wireless connections. They worked smoothly, and the signal was transmitted without significant drops. If you need Yamaha's proprietary MusicCast multi-room audio technology, you'll be pleased to know it is available here. Those owning iOS devices can make good use of the AirPlay 2 feature. If you pair this receiver with 6 ohm speakers, the power output is 100 watts another present from the manufacturer is YPAO. It offers 8 different positions and chooses the most suitable one based on your current environment. It worked great for my studio. While listening to the audio, I could fully concentrate on its quality instead of devoting time to arduous setting up. I liked that playback was always accurate. The balance between sonic spectrums was on point. Pro's nice, clear, and loud sound. MusicCast app works like a charm. Has lots of future potential. Instant access to audio sharing services. Cons loose knobs and cheap-looking plastic panel. The volume button doesn't rotate smoothly. UI display should be upgraded. Coming in number 1. Denon AVRX 2700H. Hardly can you find another 7.2-channel receiver with many advanced features that can stay on par with Denon AVR 2700H. The first thing that caught my ear was the realism of sound, no matter whether you watch a movie or listen to audio from popular streaming platforms. You can't help but notice such an extensive soundstage with each element being accurately defined. Now I understand all that hype about the brand. Thanks to Dolby Atmos height virtualization, I got authentic immersive sound in my studio while watching the movie. It seemed that soldiers were marching right in the room, while shooting was very frightening because of how lifelike it sounded. Similar to Marantz SR5015, this device allows watching 8K content. Though it may sound like a marketing trick, 
the receiver won't let you down when you are ready for the 8K adventure. If you plan to use this device for streamlined gaming sessions, you are bound to be impressed by stunning imaging, reduced lag and frame tearing, and auto low latency mode. I found 8 HDMI ports on the case, so connecting audio and video sources won't cause problems. Besides, there is a dedicated phono input for users who want to connect a turntable. As for the wireless connection, things are predictable, you have both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. However, the manufacturer also added AirPlay 2 for Apple fans. I also like the possibility of connecting wireless speakers using onboard HEOS technology. But this is a must for receivers in this price category. I tried streaming from Deezer, Spotify, and SoundCloud and am fully satisfied with all results. The sound was rhythmic and staccato, the transitions were smooth. I believe that AVR2700H perfectly coped with its mission. The manufacturer specified that the power output equals 95W 8 ohms and reaches 125W 6 ohms that is enough for medium-sized and large rooms. My studio belongs to the first category, and the receiver entirely covered the space. As for setup, everything was simple and intuitive. Included instructions made the process smooth. Pros lots of handy modes. Zone 2 support and much power for driving any 7.2 channel setup. Remarkable cooling system. Max volume limit to prevent hearing issues. Cons. The app calls for improving.